Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to create a chrome statuette from a photo. I provided this template that contains two layers, a base for the statuette and a black background. Feel free to widen the canvas if your subject requires more room. To do this, go to Image and Canvas Size. Then just increase the width. Then fill the rest of the background with black, but before you do, if your foreground and background colors aren't black and white respectively, press D on your keyboard. Since the foreground color is black, press Alt or Option plus Delete to fill the rest of the canvas with black. Before we continue, if you want to know as soon as I upload new Photoshop tutorials, smash that subscribe button, and please remember to click that like button, which lets YouTube know you like my videos. First, let's create a background for our statuette. Click the lock icon to unlock the background. Double click the layer to open its layer style window. Click gradient overlay and the gradient bar. Click the black white gradient preset and the lower left stop. Click the color box and pick black. Then click OK or press enter or return. Click the lower right stop the color box, and pick black again. Click below the bar to add a new stop, and for its location, type in 72. Click the color box, and in the hexadecimal field, type in 7F4200. Click below the bar again, and for this stop's location, type in 74. Click the box and type in 4F2900. Now we have a simple background for our statuette. Next, we'll add a spotlight that brightens the center of the wall and floor. Click the New Layer icon to make a new layer. Press X to invert your foreground and background colors, so white is now your foreground color. Open your brush tool and brush picker. Pick a soft round brush. Make its size 2800 pixels, its hardness 0%, and its opacity and flow 100%. Center your cursor approximately here and click once. Change its blend mode to overlay. Next, we'll add a reflection of the base onto the floor. Make the base active and make a copy of it by pressing Ctrl or Command J. Name the original base Reflection and reduce its opacity to 20%. Press V to open your Move tool and press and hold the Shift key as you drag the reflection copy down. Pressing Shift kept it aligned as you dragged it. Go to Filter. Blur and Gaussian Blur. Blur it 5 pixels. Next, we'll add a reflective glow to the inner and outer edges of the base. Double click the top base to open its layer style window. Click Inner Glow. If the color box isn't white, click it and pick white. The blend mode is Linear Dodge and its opacity is 20%. The technique is softer and the source is edge. The choke is zero, and the size is 70 pixels. The contour is linear, and the range is 50%. Click Outer Glow. The color is white, the blend mode is screen, and the opacity is 10%. The technique is softer, the spread is zero, and the size is 80 pixels. The contour is linear, and the range is 50%. Next, we'll adjust the chrome base's color cast to the background. Before we do, let's save some space in the Layers panel by collapsing the effects. Click the Adjustment Layer icon and click Hue Saturation. We want the Adjustment Layer to affect just the base directly below it. However, since Adjustment Layers affect all the layers below them in the Layers panel, we'll need to clip it or restrict it to the base layer. To do this, Click the Clipping Mask icon or go to Layer and Create Clipping Mask. 
Another way to clip it is to press and hold Alt or Option as you hover your cursor between the layers. When you see this icon, click it. Check Colorize. Make the hue 30, the saturation 10, and the lightness 0. Open a photo of someone or something that you'd like to use for this project. I downloaded this one from Shutterstock. Using a full figure is preferable since it is a statuette. First, we'll separate our subject from its background. There are many ways to do this, but for this example, let's use the Quick Selection tool. If you're using CC 2018 or later, click the Select Subject button to let Photoshop automatically select it. In earlier versions, drag the tool over your subject to select it. To remove areas of the selection, press and hold Alt or Option as you drag over those areas. Once we're happy with our selection, we'll soften its edges by going to Select, Modify, and Feather. Feather it one pixel. Click the layer mask icon to make a layer mask of it. We'll place our subject and its layer mask onto the base by pressing V to open the Move tool and dragging it onto the tab of the base document. Without releasing your mouse or pen, drag your cursor down and release. To resize your subject, press Ctrl or Command T to open your Transform tool. Go to a corner. If you're using CC 2019 or later, press and hold Alt or Option as you drag it in or out. In earlier versions, press Alt or Option plus Shift as you drag it. Then press Enter or Return. To reposition it, just drag it. We'll convert our subject into a smart object. Go to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. Blur it one pixel. Go back to Filter, Blur, and Surface Blur. Basically, Surface Blur blurs an image while preserving its edges. Make the radius and the threshold both 20. The radius specifies the size of the area sampled for the blur, while the threshold determines the amount of blur. Click the Adjustment Layer icon and click Black and White. Clip it to your subject. Click the Adjustment Layer icon again and this time click Invert. Then clip it to the subject. Change the Blend Mode to Difference. Shift click the subject to make it and the two adjustment layers above it active and convert them into a smart object. Go to Filter and Filter Gallery. Open the Artistic Folder and click Plastic Wrap. Make the Highlight Strength 10, the Detail 1, and the Smoothness 15. Go to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. Blur it 1.5 pixels. Click the Adjustment Layer icon and click Curves. Clip it to the subject. The Curves panel basically shows the tonal range of our image. By dragging the dark tones up, the mid tones down, and the light tones up, creating a hill, a valley, and a hill, we're drastically altering the tones of our image. The magic happens once we press Ctrl or Command J to make a copy of it and clip it. Feel free to drag the curves until you're happy with the look of the chrome. Shift click the subject to make it and the two adjustment layers above it active and convert them into a smart object. We'll copy the inner and outer glows of the base onto our statuette by pressing and holding Alt or Option as we drag the copy onto the statuette layer. We'll copy the hue saturation of the base as well. Drag the copy to the top and clip it to the statuette. Lastly, we'll add the reflection of the statuette below the base reflection. First, let's collapse the smart filters to save some space. Make the statuette active and make a copy of it. 
Press Ctrl or Command and the left bracket key to jump the statuette copy down between the base reflection and layer 1, which is the white brush stroke that gave us the central glow over our background wall. Go to Edit, Transform, and flip Vertical. Press and hold the Shift key as you drag it down. Position it so that the hidden bottom of the flipped statuette is positioned to the bottom of the visible statuette. Reduce its opacity to 10%. Control or Command click the thumbnail of the base reflection to select its shape. Alt or Option click the layer mask icon to make an inverted layer mask of the selection. This hides the statuette reflection behind the base reflection. Go to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. Blur it 5 pixels. To restore back the color of the background, reclip the adjustment layer to the statuette. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.